Thank you, Jesus. Now to the person close to you, ask whether that person has a Bible and a notebook. right okay I remember dealing with uh, the book of Job some time back when I was talking about the voice of God and so on let's turn there to the book of Job chapter 33 verse number 14 Job 33, verses 14 and 15. And then we'll look at the book of Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, chapter 60, and the first verse. Verse number 14 of the book of Job. Chapter 33. <coughs> For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon man, in slumberings upon the bed. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. We may be seated. Oh, Jesus. I think by, under, by now, most of you, you understand what we mean by visions of the night or dreams. Now, why are we talking about dreams? Why are we talking about dreams these days? Why is it important to understand dreams? Or in fact, what exactly is happening when a person is having a dream? If you are to ask yourself a lot of questions, this is one of the questions that you have to ask yourself. Why is it important for people to be having dreams? Now, if you study your Bible very well, you understand that the people that we are emulating and that have become our models in as far as uh, Bible characters are concerned were dreamers. Now, Abraham was a dreamer. Even if you look at certain moments when God would speak to him and say, I would want you to do this and that, most of the times if you look at it, he was asleep. It was during the night. And God would visit the father of faith, Abraham, and talk to him in a dream. And also if you look at Jacob, he was also a dream, I remember, when he saw the ladder that was coming down from heaven and it had its foundation on the earth and angels were descending and ascending upon it. That was a dream. Even when Jacob was supposed to come back from Laban, he saw again in a dream 
And you see men like David, he would have dreams. People like Solomon, when the Lord visited him and he said, what should I do for you? And he said, if I can have wisdom from you so that I would know how to deal with the matters of your people. And God said, okay, since you have asked for that good thing, I will give you wisdom. And apart from that, I will give you honor and riches and all that was given to him. All that entire transaction happened in a dream. It wasn't a physical thing that maybe some of you might be waiting for and saying, oh God, if God is going to visit me, if God, if God, if God is going to come to me and talk to me, and sometimes you neglect some of the dreams that you are experiencing, and you are waiting for God to visit you in person, which might take time or which might not happen to all of us. So I need you to begin to respect the dreams that you have, especially if you are now at a position whereby you can distinguish the difference between a lie and the truth. You need to begin and to start respecting dreams that God is giving you now because that's another way through which God communicates with his people. Even if you look at Solomon, if that was a dream, how many times have we dreamt ourselves? And what we dreamt, we never wrote it anyway. We thought, ah, it was just a mere dream. But imagine if Solomon had not written it down. We wouldn't have known that he had such an experience in the spirit. But it's because he understood the value of dreams and he wrote it down for our purpose so that we would look at it and understand that dreams are very important. So, but you know that it's also appears as if it wasn't a dream. If I tell you that Solomon was just having a dream, that's when you begin to respect dreams, but you are also having the same dreams. But it's just that you don't respect what you see when you go to sleep. But dreams are supposed to be respected. Why? I've given you a scripture. I'm not going to take much of your time. I've given you a scripture here that says God speaks to his people. God speaks. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. So understand that you are serving a God that speaks. He's a God that communicates. He's a God that talks. But our problem is that we cannot perceive, we are not able to understand what God is saying. Not only does he speak to you once, he can even speak to you twice. And after speaking to you or talking to you twice, Yet our problem remains the same, and that is to perceive and to understand what God is saying. So now, we end up finding ourselves in places which we were never supposed to be found, into disasters, into broken relationships, and into abuse, into rape, into all sorts of things, unaware. And we claim that God never spoke to us about it. And yet God speaks once and even twice to every person, warning us against something that is coming. But our problem is that we are not able to perceive and to understand what he's talking about. So God is not interested in seeing you falling into a trap unaware. God is not interested in just surprising you every day. God wants you to know some of the happenings that are going to take place tomorrow, next week, a month from now, a year from now. God is interested in allowing you to have access 
to that information. So now, why are we talking about dreams now here? We're talking about dreams because most of us here, majority of us, in fact, God has once spoken to you, even twice spoken to you about your profession, but you were not able to perceive. He spoke to you about your life partner, the girl that you're supposed to marry, and the guy that is supposed to marry you. God might have spoken already. But your problem is that you're not able to perceive and to understand. So you can imagine now that if God has already dealt with your future by opening up the future to you in a dream, but then you wake up, you don't realize what you saw, you don't remember everything that you experienced in a dream. That is the problem now. So is it going to be God's fault if you finally get married to the wrong person? But because you forgot the vision and you forgot the dream, you're saying no today, but tomorrow I'm going to hear you asking God, so why did God allow, why did you allow me to enter into this kind of a relationship? Is it really because God allowed you to enter or God warned you but you were not able to understand and to perceive. So I want you to realize that it is important to begin to get serious about some of the dreams that you get. Of course, some of them, majority of them might be useless. There's no need for you to make a follow-up of certain dreams. But there are those dreams Already we have heard from the word of God. God cannot lie. If the Bible is saying God speaks, it means we are not serving a mute God. Okay? The God that you serve, that you worship, he speaks to his people every time. And when the Bible says once or twice, he's not saying you only hear God once in your entire lifetime. He's talking about a, a, a particular matter in your life. If there is a situation in your life, maybe you want to get a job, maybe you want to start a business, maybe you want to get married, maybe you want to do this. On that particular incident or uh, 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 situation, God speaks to you either once or twice. Whether to go ahead or to delay or to stop completely. Okay? And then because we want to do it and we are so eager and we are very determined, we continue pushing ourselves into dangerous territories. But God might have already warned us in a dream, in a vision of the night. But it's because most of you, you are not attentive to what God is saying to you. Now, I'll give you some very practical things that you can do from now. Very, very practical. I wouldn't want to make it too complicated. Do you know that you may be having more than 10 dreams in the night? You might be having more than 20 dreams in, in just one night, but every time when you wake up, you might only remember one dream or two dreams the most. Or to forget all of them completely. Which is a problem to some of you. you. You wake up knowing that I had a dream. You see, sometimes the devil is so, so smart. I don't know how he does it. To allow you to remember that you had a dream, but you can't remember the dream. So that it pains you. You feel like it's now almost close. close. It's like you're almost getting it. Hey, it's, it's, it's. But you never get it. You will never get it, especially if it is a dream of any importance in your life. The devil is not going to allow you to, ex to have access back to that dream again. So God has already spoken, but it is difficult for you to perceive, difficult for you to understand. Imagine a life whereby God said, okay, tomorrow is Monday, okay? But before you get into Monday, I would want you to pass through a spiritual territory a spiritual place where you are informed about the tomorrow that you're about to enter into 
and you play around with that precious moment. When you go to sleep, it's not just an issue of going to rest. It's a moment of communication, which most of you, even if you, before you get into, before you get into the prophetic full time, Do you know that if you do a study on dreams, general study on dreams, right? The reason why you normally remember one dream, it is because most of the times you only wake up once. I'm trying to train you something here because you can't be a part of the prophetic ministry. And prophecy is not your portion. You have to be able to hear the voice of God when you go to sleep. And to be able to tell this is God, this is the devil, and I will reject it. You have to have that ability from now. You have to have that ability from now. Look at this. Why you, you remember only one dream? Listen to me. The reason why you remember only one dream is because you normally wake up only once. And that is in the morning. This other waking up and going back to sleep, waking up and going back to sleep, that's not really waking up. That's not really waking up. If you wake up once every morning, you are likely going to remember only one dream. And that dream that you remember, in most cases, not all the cases, in most cases, it will be the closest dream or the last dream that you might have had before waking up. So by the time you wake up, your spirit is still active to remind the flesh. Where you forget most of your dreams is during the handover, takeover moment. When the spirit hands over data to the flesh and the flesh does not have enough capacity to store all the data that you might have gotten when you, when you were having dreams. Okay, I, 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 am I talking to somebody here? So I'm going to give you something very, very practical because why am I worried about dreams? I've been talking about dreams for a very long time now. Why am, am I worried about this, the, this issue of dreams? Some few weeks ago, we were dealing with following after the men of faith. We have obtained promises, right? If you follow me and I don't disclose this to you, you're just following for no reasons. And you're never going to catch up. And you'll never reach to this place where I am now if I don't give this to you now. So it's critical information that you are getting. <laughs> critical information. Where people lose most of their dreams listen to this uh, man of god where people lose it is when you are dreaming do you know that when we go to sleep like i said general uh, research on that you'll find out that there's there is a term that they call rem r e m rapid eye movement when a person is asleep and is having a dream you can actually tell when you look at the person, you can look at that ram. It's a moment that can tell somebody who is awake that this person is going through a dream now. There is a reflection in the physical that shows that there is something happening to this person. Okay? Okay. So if you were able to wake up after every REM. It was going to be easy for you to remember. I wouldn't want to bring you under unnecessary torture because I know that most of you enjoy your sleep very well. But you also, you don't understand why you go to sleep. That's the problem now. 
Because some of you, you go to sleep, you are tired, and when you wake up, you are also tired, even worse. So what's the point of spending hours sleeping? Why do we have dreams? Why do we have to go to sleep? Now, God himself prefers that moment. He sees it as an opportunity. Because that's the moment when your flesh is put to rest. It's no longer contributing or interfering with the voice of God. And God can relate well with your spirit. So it's a moment that God would want to really utilize. And I would want you to take advantage of that moment. When you go to sleep, your spirit is more activated than your flesh. So you are now more active in the spirit. But the problem is when you wake up, to then transfer that information from the spirit man to the carnal man. The carnal man cannot handle that. That amount of information, he cannot. So what do you need to do now? You can start training yourself not just to wake up once in the morning. No. Even if you make it three times in the night. The better. It's, an ex it's a spiritual exercise. You go to sleep. When you are going to sleep, take your notebook, your pen. Put it on the headboard, wherever, even if you are lying on the floor. Just put it on the headboard there. Okay? Right. Just that act, it is an act of faith. Even the dream itself will know that you are ready for it. It's an action of faith. So going to sleep is like you are now getting into, you are engaging yourself into a research program about your life. You enjoy going to bed because you say, now tonight, I can't wait. I need to pray now before I go to sleep. And after prayer, you know that you are ready. And when you go to sleep, you are not just going there to rest, but you are going to walk into your future. <laughs> now, for some of you might say, ah, men of God, you know, <laughs> how can we be doing all that? But listen, why should we waste all these nights? Why should we be wasting all these nights and all these hours? And all for in the name of resting. Resting, okay, now if we look at our current situation now in Zimbabwe, where we no longer have jobs, companies have closed. I hear now that more, almost like 20 companies are closing every month. Can you imagine? So if that is the case, if God said you have to go to sleep so that you rest, so we are resting from what? Is this a question? Because you want to justify resting and going to sleep and you sleep for 20 hours. My question is, resting from what? You are not working. You are not going to school. And you enjoy resting. Do you just have to start by resting or you have to start by working and you get tired and then you rest? What's wrong with us? So when you get an opportunity to go and sleep, it's not just a moment of resting and relaxing. No, it's an opportunity. It's a doorway into your future. Those are moments when God allows you to enter into forthcoming realms, activities, events, places. If you hear a person saying, I don't dream. Yes, for me, I don't even dream. Please pray for me. That's a lie. Every person, you, <clears throat> by the time you close your eyes, you're already dreaming. Your problem is that you forget. But what are you forgetting? Maybe you're forgetting the husband. What are you forgetting? Maybe you're forgetting the right wife that God spoke to you about. Because the moment you say, I forget, that's true, you forget. But what are you forgetting? Which means you are likely going to walk into that territory. 
and fall in love with that wrong person unaware and yet you were informed but you forgot and what makes you to forget that's what i'm telling you now it's too much of the flesh the flesh cannot handle information that is coming from the spirit at the time of waking up so if you are having one dream that you remember every time why not wake waking up yourself three times in the night i know some might say ah that sounds crazy how can you be waking up yourself three times and how do you do that you can set an alarm you can set an alarm after maybe every three hours or so okay what's wrong with that and when you wake up it's not just so that you remember the dream but those are moments that you wake up and then you speak in tongues you pray in the spirit you pray in the spirit you pray in the spirit even for three minutes four minutes that's okay move around your house pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit you reset it again for the next three hours and when you wake up and you can't remember anything as you continue doing that you begin to perfect your dreaming abilities because it's a gift listen to me it's a biblical thing god would speak to his servants do you know that even joseph god spoke to him in a dream and angels were appearing to him in a dream the father of jesus take the child go to egypt from egypt go back okay and don't divorce your wife god was speaking to him in a dream so dreams are very important dreams are very very important why people fear dreams is because they don't know how to dissect they don't know how to distinguish between the voice of god and the voice of the devil so you end up throwing away everything including the voice of god no god speaks to his people once even twice concerning any given matter before you make a decision what is god saying So if you're going to wake up three times and you are a professional dreamer this is what makes you a professional dreamer now it's not just about dreaming no it's it's a profession now you actually intentionally dream and know that i'm about to go to sleep so that i would have an experience with the lord so after three hours you wake up you might not remember the first time the following day if you don't want to do that every day because you want to rest you can choose one day a week and say okay this is the day that i'm going to be doing that it's a spiritual exercise okay you wake up you try to remember if you can't remember don't give up keep on doing it there will come a time when it becomes a practice that's why you see if you read your bible very very well you see that zachariah he was working in the temple in the house of god during his time he, it was his time as a priest to be serving and burning incense in the temple which means though zachariah had a lot of problems to do with barrenness and so on he kept on coming back to the house of god so it had now become like a culture do you know that even jesus himself he would go to sin if you read your bible the bible says jesus would go to synagogues as his custom yes. when a thing becomes a culture when you continue exercising yourself and reminding yourself every night that i am a dreamer i am a prophet i'm a prophetess i see i hear listen to me listen to me people listen to me the devil doesn't fear you when you dream the enemy is not afraid of dreams he fears you when you wake up arise and shine yes. isaiah 60 verse number one arise 
and shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Now, arise and shine, it's a statement being given to somebody who is always lying down. Having a dream is not a problem. Seeing your future is not a problem. We're trying to get into this degree, that program, that's not a problem. But if you cannot wake up and arise, the devil is not afraid of you. There has to come a time when after seeing the light, you have to wake up. Joseph, what he saw in his dreams, it was completed physically when he woke up. So he's never, the enemy that you're dealing with now called Lucifer, Satan, the devil, is not threatened by any sort of a dream that you can have. As long as you cannot wake up and arise, you will never shine. Your life begins to shine when you arise. This world is not just for dreamers. This world is not just for visionaries. This world is for those that are willing and determined to rise up to the occasion and be ready to face your dreams, no matter what it takes. Listen to what the prophet is saying. He's saying, why you have to rise up is because your light has come. What is light? Information. Your information has come. You have to wake up, rise up, and what? Shine. I prophesy you shall shine. You shall shine. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that there is such a promise from the prophet of God Isaiah that somebody here is going to rise up. It is going to shine like a star. And people are going to celebrate and to come and to enjoy your light so now i'm about to close now look at this sit down sit down let me let me close let me close i'm now a short preacher eh? <laughs> so please understand what i'm saying you have to understand that when you continue having dreams and then you don't wake up the devil doesn't care about you because many billions of people are doing that they don't know how to specialize in dreams capitalize and take advantage of their dreams so you find a person doing for the next 70 years of his life he is busy doing something that he was never born to be doing never 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 somebody who was supposed to be a pilot he spends the rest of his life teaching children he's a school teacher Somebody who was supposed to be a doctor, a medical doctor, the rest of his life is chasing thieves. He's a policeman. And the dangers that you face there, and you're asking God, why God? Why God? And yet God spoke to you. There was a time when you were given access into your future, but when you woke up, you forgot. You can't remember. pursuing other people's visions and other people's dreams when are you going to pursue your own dream and how can you pursue it unless you remember and even if you remember unless you are ready to rise up and shine am i talking to somebody here you might see certain things now in your dreams and you're saying ah that can never be me what kind of a car no the one that i saw it can't be me driving that <laughs> dreams sometimes they come to you at a moment you know when you are still growing in the spirit right god gives you dreams that sometimes are equivalent to your level in the spirit and you see things 
if you are small in the spirit, you see small things. And when you begin to develop yourself in the spirit and you are maturing, you are growing in the spirit, you see mature dreams. Developed dreams. They begin to come. When I was growing up, you know, I had also ambitions. If I tell you, Pastor, that if there is a car that I dreamt of, it was a hard body. I dreamt, hard body, not these latest ones. The first hard body, you know, those were the Nissan, the, yeah, exactly that one. Yeah, with the really power steering. It's, yeah, it's real power steering. Yeah, real power. That one, I don't know what happened. I would see that once every week. I would see myself driving that one. Maybe I was going to be a hard prophet or something. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I saw it. And when the first, you know, <clears throat> those days, you would hardly come across one. And I would say, myself, driving this. Ha! Huh. Hmm. It was just a dream. But what did I do? Everything that I see now happening, it once came to me in a dream. I know some of you might say, ah, I don't want these dreams and so on. I want to do life, life with them like this. I want to see. You develop yourself from there. Because seeing, like I'm seeing now, talking to that gentleman over there, that's not the foundation. That could be maybe the fourth floor or fifth floor or somewhere there. You have to start from dreams. Be able to articulate dreams. And when you know to, how to deal with those dreams, you wake up, take your notebook, and you write. Even if it doesn't make sense, but as long as you can remember, write it down. Let somebody come into your room and pick up that book and say, ah, this person seems to be crazy. What is this? This is all rubbish. Keep that rubbish. Keep it. You just write. You put it. You write. You put it down. You, you, yeah. Not just a small piece of paper, have, have <laughs> a serious booklet where you keep some of those. Do you know there are times when you see something and even if you can remember the dream, there are times when you see something happening and you say, ah, I think I've seen this before. So you see now, it's like it has happened before. It's like you have been to that place before. It's like you almost know, you can almost tell that, ah, yeah, I remember we were here and somebody came and all of a sudden you see the, that person coming and you say, ah, it's like, it's like, you see now, it means there was a time when God gave you access into the future, but you were not attentive. But if you had kept it somewhere, imagine even the Bible that we have now, if people had never thought of writing it down, we're never going to have the written word of God. So writing down your visions and your dreams is very, very important. Very, very important. Even if you are going to pray against it, trying to stop it, try to stop it and also write it down that I've prayed. Write the dream that bad dream, write it down. If you know it's a bad dream, but you know it's coming from the Lord. Yes. You have to, to take it serious. Because it will happen. So you have to write it down and say, this is what I've seen in my revelations, in my dreams. If you pray against it, this is what you have to understand now. Can I, can I show you this? For you now to know whether God has answered your prayer, how do you know? Because sometimes when you pray, you're, not, you're no longer praying in a dream. You saw something in a dream and then you wake up 
and you pray against it. So for you to now know that my prayer is answered, how do you know? Very simple. The easiest way, it is the word of God. He said, when you pray, believe. When you pray, when you ask for anything, believe that you have received it and you shall have it. Number two, after prayer, that's what I do sometimes. Personally, I'm just giving you some of my own personal experiences, which might be different with your own experiences. But what I do sometimes, if I see a case like this, I might pray for this gentleman. Okay? Like I've done before. I've prayed for people before, even in the morning, I prayed for some people somewhere over there. Okay? So after praying for him now, I've developed my sensitivity. As for you, I might say, don't go by your feelings because I know that you don't know the difference. But as for me, after praying for him, the question is, do I feel the peace? <laughs> and there are people that I pray for sometimes and I don't feel the peace. And I will know that I've just prayed for this person, but this thing is going to happen. I pray, I pray, I pray, I, I push, but still after prayer, I feel like, ha. As for you, it might be a wrong feeling because you don't know how to <laughs> discern or to perceive the difference. But as for me, I see it, I pray against it, and then when I continue feeling that same thing coming back again, I move into the next level. That's me. Don't do that. That's me. What I do is this. Do you want to know? What I do is, let's say, am I supposed to be telling you all this? Please. They're not supposed to know everything. <laughs> He's saying, oh, yes. <laughs> all right, all right. Listen to me now. What was I talking about? I forgot. Okay, so this is what happens. Let's say... He's my spiritual son, like I had a confirmation that he's a member of this church. But listen to me. About a, a, a biological son. Let's say I'm seeing something happening to my son. You go to sleep, you see it happening. You wake up, you say, ah. Do you know sometimes if God really wants you to, to remember the dream, even if it comes early, just after you go to sleep and then you have such a dream, maybe for about 10 minutes or so. And then you don't wake up until the following morning and then you wake up and you remember it. It will be because of the intensity of the dream. How terrifying it was. That's the only thing that can cause you to remember it. Or how extremely good it was. But if it was any light, light, light uh, dream or so, if you have it in the evening, you go to sleep maybe around uh, 6 o'clock. <laughs> maybe 10 o'clock or so. Okay? And you have such a dream, and you wake up the following day, maybe 6 o'clock, and you're still able to remember. It's because of the intensity. Of the dream but this is what i do now if i see something that is going to happen to my either spiritual son or biological son 
and the thing is bad. I pray about it. I pray about it and and I know this is here. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm saying that 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 I'm but when I pray and I pray and I pray, and still I don't feel peace, ha, I'll say, ah. I'm not saying go and pray against every bad dream that you have. Most of them, I said, just throw them away. Most of them, throw them away. If you see a bad dream, just throw it away. But there are those that when you throw them away, they keep on coming back. It could be the voice of God. You have to deal with it in prayer. So I pray against it. When I feel peace, I will try to categorize the peace because to me, peace comes in two phases. Either it's never going to happen or it's going to happen, but God has already comforted me. I feel peace. And the peace that I feel, it comes in two phases. I feel peace. And when it happens, I'm not shocked. I was already prepared. Or... It will never go, it's never going to happen anymore because I've prayed against it. Okay? So what if the urge to continue praying persists and I just feel like this thing is, keeps on coming back. I go to sleep again, it comes back. I go to sleep again, it comes back. I go to sleep, it comes back. God, what are you saying? What I would do now, personally, not you. Personally, what I would do to sacrifice. I will raise an offering. <laughs> I will raise an offering. And sacrifice. That's why sometimes I don't fear even if, if, if 20 prophets are to come to me and convince me and say, this is what the Lord is saying, and this is what the Lord is and this is what is. Now, I've also have got a way of dealing with those prophecies. I will do everything that it takes to stop the enemy from fulfilling his desires. If it means prayer, I'm going to pray. If it means fasting, I'm going to fast. If it means sacrifices, I'm going to sacrifice. And let's see whether God is never going to address that situation. So I raise an offering. It's not just an issue of raising funds. I'm never going to say, okay, now let's raise an offering towards that. No, I'm t telling you what I do. And most of the times, after sacrificing, I feel peace. Some might say, no, 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 no. It's not in the Old Testament. Jesus died for all that. <laughs> That's why you're still dying. You have to know what Jesus did. Understand what Jesus did. Somebody came to me and said, why do you continue teaching about tithe? <laughs> when Jesus has already died, he's the greatest sacrifice. Ultimate sacrifice. Why tithing again? And I said, so after the cross, after the cross, that's where we are, right? He said, yes. He said, are you still in the Old Testament? He said, I'm, I'm in the New Testament. I said, this is after the cross. He said, after the cross. And I said, do you pay your taxes? Do you pay your taxes after the cross? And I said, according to your understanding of the word of God, is it an evil act when a government is collecting tax from its own people according to your understanding of the word of God 
Is it wrong for a government to be collecting taxes from its own citizens? It's not wrong. Remember what Jesus said, said give unto Caesar what belongs to? Caesar. That's it. So if it is right for the government to continue collecting taxes after the cross, what are we talking about now? Are they not supposed to be taxes in the house of God? And the Bible says Jesus became a, put an end to the sacrifice of sin. Tithe was never a sacrifice of sin. He became a sin offering. Are you following this now? Are you following this? Are you following this? So that's what I do personally. I'm not here just to convince you. I've already convinced myself and it has worked for me. Sometimes if I pray for certain individuals and I see that, hey, there is no light. There is no light. I'm praying for this. There is no light. And I sacrifice. <laughs> I'm not making up a doctrine and saying, go and do likewise, but I'm just telling you what I do. Telling you what I do. How about the sacrifice of Jesus? Is it not enough? Look at your life. It's a sure sign that it's not enough. Why should you be asking such a question? The sacrifice on the cross. Jesus is enough. Are you sure it's enough? I know Jesus is enough. I know Jesus is enough. But Jesus has got phases. Okay? The person of Jesus, he came and he died. But there are also principles of Jesus that you have to follow. The person of Jesus will cause your sins to be forgiven and you go to heaven. But the principles of Jesus will bring heaven down. The principles of Jesus. <laughs> it's amazing how people question some of these issues and they say ah why do they talk about money in the house of god after the cross jesus died and he covered everything but still they wake up in the morning every monday going to work after the cross why do you continue working why do you still receive money after you've already received the blood of jesus <laughs> money is still important even after the cross even in the house of God. Are we together? So that's what I do sometimes when I pray about something and I continue. It's not about the amount. Some of you, maybe a dollar could be like a million dollars. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. You saw it and you pray and you say, what I've seen in that revelation, what I've seen Father, in the name of Jesus. If there is somebody out there trying to work out his own sacrifice against myself, against my children, in the name of Jesus, I come against every evil altar erected and raised against me. And I'm here now at the altar of God in your house now. I'm also here at this altar communicating with the heavens. I want to delete every dream. I want to delete every plan. And I'm deleting every strategy of the enemy against me, against my education, against my parents, against my children. And you are launching missiles against the evil one. And please hear me now, hear me now, hear me now. You realize that even the dream, some of you might have already, God might have already spoken to you about your future and you forgot. My prayer now is that that same dream that you lost, you are going back home, you are going to sleep, and you are going to have it for the last time again. Which means, which means what is now taking place, it's a correction realignment so most of you now because of this sermon you are now going to rediscover your professions now i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm telling you 
I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So instead of having only one dream, you're going to have three dreams a night. Okay? So keep on doing it. If you see that it doesn't work, ah, you wake up and say, ah, but I don't need to stay bro. Sometimes it might even, the alarm might ring. Ah, man, alarm, it doesn't ring. Leave it like that. Continue doing that. There will come a time when dreams will begin to fit within the time frame that you have created. If you come across a person who would tell you that ah, dreams are not important, show him that's, that scripture. God speaks once, even twice. But men do not perceive. Which means perceiving if that was the problem that you had, now in the name of Jesus, it is being corrected in Jesus' name. When you have a dream, the following day you wake up, I prophesy, you shall arise and shine. For your light has come. You may be seated. You may be seated. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your children here. That you activate their spirits. Make them aware of your presence. When they go to rest, allow them to see. Allow them to touch and to feel and to hear. Move them into places. Let them have a walk into their future. Give them some warnings against what is coming tomorrow. And make them to understand what you're talking about. Strange people and enemies that are coming into their lives. Acting like they love them. Show it to them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Show it to them, Lord. As they are going now, they are set for this exercise. Spiritual exercise. To hear and to see. So I pray now, Lord, I ask you. That is, you have always been communicating with them. May you continue from tonight. Talk to them. They are listening. Talk to them. Just like what Eli said. He said to Samuel, go back and sleep again. Because he knew that it was in a dream. Go and lie down again. Because it is the Lord who is talking to you. But some of you are just like Samuel. Still very young in the spirit. But now I'm teaching you how to hear the voice of God. 